If you need to read an XML file, you probably want to use simple XML. However, if the file is too big, then you can use XML Reader, for instance. Those are the two possibilities that you have that are with PHP 5.2, the best, the easiest to use. However, you might be in a project where SAX is being used. SAX is similar to XML Reader. It was here before XML Reader and it operates in a little different way basically defining functions that get fired uh, when you're at the beginning of an element when you're at the end and it gets kind of complicated as you're trying to read your xml file in a similar way as xml reader where you're only looking at one little piece of data at a time but even a bit more difficult because you have a lot of issues with white space it reads the white space between the tags and that kind of thing and you've got these these events that are firing and it's kind of like uh, uh, if you were in a dark warehouse of car parts or something and you've got a flashlight and you can only look at one at a time, uh, that's what it's like using SACS to read an XML file. But what I'm going to do here is go the whole nine yards, read through our members XML file here and bend SACS so that we can build up uh, an array of members and display it just like we did with the XML reader. So here we go. We need to make a parser first. So XML parser, create, super. Now we want to define what the functions are called that are going to be called, or the name of the functions that are going to be called, when we start an element and when we end an element. So we say parser here, that's what we just made. And now we say the function, first function is going to be called start and the next function is going to be called end, that's it. We have to make these functions now. However, there's another setting we need to do. Set character data handler. And we have to send the parser again. And then we have to say C data here. That's the name of the function that we're going to make, which reads the data. So this function, let's go ahead and make it start, will be called whenever we're at the beginning of an element. So name, that's going to be the name of the element and attribute we also need. Actually, these are attributes and this is an array of all the attributes in the element that we're in. Let's just echo this out so that we get an idea of what's going on here. I'll save that for later. Here we go. So what do we need to send out? Let's say that we're at the beginning here. And name, and now we need the attributes. We're going to implode them so that they're a string. Just comma separated, attributes, super. And then this thing at the end so that we can see them all in little parentheses. And end our div here. That's super. So that is our start, which is defined here. And now we're going to make end. End. And what does end have? End doesn't have any attributes. End means this here, for instance. Here, let me show you. So start is when we're here, for instance. And that's why we have attributes. End is when we're here, and there's never any attributes in an end tag. So that's why we only have name here. I'm going to call this start because... The name of the function is start. That's just to show us where we are. And since we don't have any attributes, we don't have to do anything with attributes there. So we're just showing it here. Super. And let's actually give it some color just so we can see. And wait, bold. Okay, so now we'll be able to see the start in green. And for instance, the and in red just so that we can see what's going on here and now we just need to do one more one more and that is called c data here that's what we called it you can name these anything you want so parser data okay 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 and now we have echo div let's give this a color as well maybe a gray okay and what are we going to show here? Let's just say C data. And data and in the div tag. And we're pretty much good to go here now. So end, no space, 
Start, no space, no space. So we are almost finished here. We need to do some more, two more lines here. Parse, um, we have to actually do the parsing now. Parser, file, get, contents. We have to get the contents of the file here. So, and then send true. So this is saying with this parser that's all been set up here, and this text, which is the text from our XML file, parse it, and then this is like a close, basically. Free the parser. Parser. Okay, that's just to get the data out. So let's see if that's working here. Uh, what do we need? Read with sax. So let's go there. Read with sax. Super. Cannot redeclare end in 16. Mm -hmm. That might be reserved here. Let's try this here. You can't use the word end in this as a function name when doing this. So that is what we have as we step through our file node by node with SAX. We see here that it's at members. That's right here. Members. And C data is actually this information here and this, which is for SAX very relevant, the space between the tags. Then we go to member. That's the start of the next element. Here we are. And the attributes are one and president. And then we go to first name. And the data in first name is Jim. Then we're at the end of the first name. And again, this C data here is after the first name and before the last name. And then we get the last name, score, and so on. And it just runs through the file like that. Now, the thing is, this is probably not very useful to you because we are just skipping from element to element as we go through the XML file. And that is probably not the way you want to, for instance, output your data. You want to collect the data in some kind of variable so that after you're done going through your XML file, you have that data to act on, for instance, in an array. Let me just give you a small example, a real live example of what you might do with SACS. And that is you want to count how many members there are. The problem that you have here is you can add each time you're at members inside these functions, but the scope of your variable is only inside the function. So you need a global. And the way you define it is with globals. You find at the beginning of your file that you can then add inside your functions. So when we're done, we want to say echo, there are globals and the name is number of members. Oh, it's not there. Mm -hmm. Number of members. Okay, now, we don't want to do anything here. We don't want to do anything here. But inside start, every time we are on a member tag, we just want to increase this variable by one. So let's do a little switch here. Switch, what, name, okay. And case, now if we look here, we see that everything is uppercase. You can change that, but we'll just leave it here. We just need to know in our programming that it's uppercase. If it's member, right? Because we only have, let's see, one, two, three times that it's member. Where's the third time here? And that'll tell us how many there are. Then we say globals. Actually, I can copy this thing. So plus plus, then we have a break. We don't need this. And now we can see how many there are. If we add one, let's add one or doesn't have a position. Jill Ashton sister 22. 